I am Kang Jong-hoon, the Engine Support Engineer, who will be conducting the first EPIC Live of 2020. Starting from 2020, I mentioned in last year's final, EPIC Live, that we would greet you with various formats of EPIC Live. In this year's first EPIC Live, we will explore the method of implementing skin materials for mobile. The topic we will cover this time is something you can follow along with even without prior knowledge. However, if you find today's content difficult, reviewing the following materials will help you understand better. By using PBR in Unreal Engine, it is possible to realistically represent various materials such as metal, plastic, or wood. While these materials can be realistically rendered with PBR, materials like human skin are challenging to represent with standard PBR alone. In this wrapping live session, we will implement skin materials suitable for mobile environments using the Unreal Material Editor without modifying the engine source code. The goal was to implement it in a way that it can operate lightly based on mobile ES2 and blend well with other PBR-based materials. This tutorial is created based on the Face AR sample provided by Epic Games Launcher and is based on Unreal Engine version 4.24. After launching the Epic Games Launcher, you can select the Face AR sample from the Learning Dorse tab to download the sample. Let's take a look at the results of the content I will be sharing this time. The character on the left has the skin material applied, while the character on the right is using only PBR. If you take a closer look at the face of the character on the left, you can see that the areas where the skin is illuminated and the darker areas that are not receiving light have a slight reddish tint in between. By adjusting the direction of the directional light, you can observe how the shading changes based on the angle. Additionally, you can open the materials instance for this skin material and adjust its parameters. This allows you to modify the length of the shadow between the bright and dark areas. You can make the red areas appear smaller, closer to typical physical rendering, or you can make the red areas appear larger. Now I will show you the process of implementing skin materials step by step. In Unreal Engine, there is no need to directly improve the lighting model provided by the PBR. To express a special material like skin, a custom lighting model is necessary. In the skin material that we will implement this time, we will implement the diffuse lighting operations based on the Lambert model. In the Lambert model, the intensity of light is calculated using the dot product between the normal vector, n, of the surface and the light direction vector, l, which looks at the surface. So when the value of this dot product is 1, it means that the light is received and processed brightly. This normal vector is the n vector. As the angle increases, the intensity of the light decreases. So when the angle between the m vector and the l vector is 90 degrees, the value of the dot product becomes zero. This means that it does not receive light and is processed as dark. As this angle increases and exceeds 90 degrees, the value of the dot product will drop to zero or below. When the angle between the m vector and the l vector is 180 degrees, meaning the directions are completely opposite, the result will be minus 1. Let's open the previously downloaded face AR sample and directly implement the Lambert light. We will apply a basic filter to the sample. If you first search for the skeleton, you will find the basic character face modeling provided. Let's move the focus and try it out. This is implemented based on PBR in Unreal Engine. By holding the Alt key and moving it sideways, you can copy it like this, and we will implement a new material for this character. I right-clicked and created a material, naming it Mobile Skin. 
I will create an instance of this material and apply it to the character's face. However, this material currently has no functionality. Here, change the setting from default lit to unlit. When you base it on unlit, the lighting calculations will not be computed by the engine. And you can connect the results of the custom remotely light calculations to the emissive color to apply the custom lighting results. First, take this base texture and connect it to emissive clay. If you search for Epic Head among the textures, you will find the base map for this boy character. By connecting this map to the emissive color, you will be able to see the surface in an unlit state without any lighting applied. If you save this material, you will see that it was already applied here. So you can observe the lighting in an unlit state. And since there is no lighting, the base color will be visible as it is. By multiplying the lighting results by the Lambert light calculation, basic lighting is applied. The normal vector of the surface that I explained earlier is the value of the normal vector at the pixels visible on the screen for that surface. The dot product between this value and the light direction becomes the world of light. Since we still do not know the value of the light direction, let's arbitrarily set the direction of the light using a const3 format vector. When you save, the direction of the light direction on the surface is this way Right? Since the value is 1 and the x value is 0, while the z value is also 0, the direction receiving light is the normal vector. The dot product of the normal vector and the light direction is 1, which means it is currently being brightly shaded. Since there may be issues, if the value of this vector is not a normalized vector with a magnitude of 1, I will add a normalize node to ensure it becomes a unit vector with a magnitude of 1. By modifying the L vector to the values 1, 0, 0 in the direction of the x axis, the L vector will change in the x axis direction, and you will be able to see the corresponding changes in shading. Since the L vector used here is now a constant value, the shading will not change even if exactly. The direction of the light source placed in this world changes. To retrieve precisely the exact direction vector placed in this world, we will use a parameter collection. First, let's place a directional light source in this world. When we change exactly, the direction of this light. The character model using our PBR shading model will have its shading change according to precisely the direction of that light. However, in our custom shading model, we can clearly see that it is not affected by exactly the precise direction of such a light source. We will then create an important material parameter collection and add one light vector parameter to it. 
the name given for such an important parameter collection shall be custom light parameters. I need one specific vector parameter named as light vector, which should be kept strictly in vector form. And I also require another crucial parameter specifically meant for measuring light intensity, which corresponds directly with all three components belonging to said lighting system, but represented accurately within Scala format. I shall set my default value initially at 1.0, while setting up my default directional values along x-axis directions only. This particular new parameter could easily replace inherited constant values previously used before now. To achieve these steps successfully, I must return back into Material Editor interface again. Search thoroughly under available options until finding relevant collection parameters needed. Finally, retrieving desired light vectors from newly created custom lights parameters collections just established earlier and utilizing them effectively instead replacing old constants applied beforehand. Since the vector obtained from the collection parameter is a 4D vector, we will use a component mask to extract only the directional values, which are the X, Y, and Z values. If you select RGB for X, Y, and Z here, you will only be able to obtain the X, Y, and Z values. This will eliminate any errors. Although we have now obtained the parameter, it is not yet connected to the directional light placed in the world, so it is not influenced by the direction of the light. Therefore, we need to create a light actor that is connected to this parameter. Thus, the name of the blueprint will be BP Directional. Name it Light and double-click this Blueprint class to open it and add components. If you search for directional light, move this directional light to the root component. In the construction script, obtain the forward vector from the light component. This direction vector will represent the direction in which the directional light shines. For example, in order to achieve this, you can use the construction script to retrieve the forward vector from the light component. This direction vector will represent the direction in which the directional light shines and the direction of this vector. By multiplying by minus 1, it will now be flipped in the opposite direction, which becomes the L vector we need for the material. To pass this to the material parameter collection, you will add a function called value and pass this parameter here. This parameter now needs to be passed to our custom light parameter, which is the material parameter collection, and the name of this parameter is light vector. By adding this, every time the construction script is called, it will flip the pod vector of the directional light and pass it to the collection parameter. Additionally, instead of only being called when the construction script is executed, it should be called every frame to ensure that the light's direction is updated in real time whenever it changes.